What's up? I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Thanks for joining me again today. Going to talk about the screen bottom board, especially how it relates to our winter preparation. In the last video that I made, uh, many of you were asking me about my views of screen bottom board. You were wondering if I close them off or if I keep them open. And some of you are wondering if you should put a solid bottom board on going into winter or, you know, what do you do with that screen bottom board? And I wanted to drill down a little bit more about my reasoning and philosophy about what I do with my screen bottom boards. Now, before I do, let me just put this out there as a disclaimer. I don't own all the knowledge about getting your bees through the winter. I'm pretty darn good with it. I have some really good reasoning behind what I do, and it really does pay off, not all the time. I still lose hives in the winter like everybody else, but it really has helped me to make a few changes to my operation. And one of those surrounds what I do with my screen bottom boards. Now, so let me say that if you're really a person that believes in solid bottom boards for the winter and that's working really well for you, that's what you need to keep doing. I just, I'm a firm believer that if you've got something going on and it's working, that's the best plan. All right. You know, don't, don't just get on YouTube and, and try somebody else's plan because, you know, he said it works for him or her and they have millions of hives that are doing fantastic. You know, that's not enough information. You need to really trial and error your way to success like all people have to do. You've got to try it out. Don't take other people's words for it because they might live in a different climate. They might uh, have just a whole different environment that their bees are exposed to than what you have. They may have more time to spend in, your bee, in their bees than you have in your hive. So a lot of differences come into play. No single magic snap of the finger and it all turns out great. But this is my view of screen bottom board. Now, I kind of started thinking about this when you think about a colony that's in their natural habitat, which is mainly a hollow tree out in the woods somewhere. So the center hollow point of that large tree that the bees make their natural habitat in, it has usually a pretty good distance between the bottom of where the swarm or the colony is all the way down to the floor of the tree, a big open area. I was at a conference once and I heard a very reputable speaker talk about this. And the way he described it was that when bees are clustered in the winter in a large tree somewhere, all the garbage in the hive falls very far away from the colony, from the cluster. It falls away and down to the bottom of the tree where other critters eat it and it goes away. And so in a screen bottom board scenario, we have that going on to a large part. A lot of the stuff that falls out of the cluster or colony does fall through the screen. In the winter time, it still falls through the screen. And that just makes a little bit better scenario for me. Too much stuff collects on the bottom of the, of the solid bottom board. And I believe that just gives a breeding ground for a lot of things like small hive beetle that overwinter with uh, the colony. So an important thing I want to explain also is that when we have two deeps like this, the screen bottom board on a hive stand, we have a distance of six to eight inches here that I've talked about before. The reason I like to wrap my hive where I cover this bottom board is because when I put my winter bee kind on, I want to force my bees to go in and out from the little slot in the winter bee kind. Because get this, when the dead bees fall down to the bottom board, whether it's solid or screen, they're going to collect here and they're going to just clog up the entrance. Now, I think a healthy colony is quite capable of cleaning out the dead bees. But get this, let's say the temperature is about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is the temperature that bees will not fly unless it's really, really sunny, not very windy. So we have a lot of sun that's shining down onto the hive and kind of heating it up. At 34 and above, these bees will feel that heat and they may break cluster. But at that temperature, the cluster might be located inside the hive about right here, making up this area. When it gets warm enough, 
it's unlikely that the bees are going to travel all the way down here and walk over their dead sisters to fly out when they're so close to the top up here and especially if you have the winter bee kind on here and then your top cover on there the bees are likely to just pop out of this hole take a cleansing flight and come back rather than have to walk all the way down to the bottom away from the cluster over their dead sisters and fly out. So that's why I go ahead and just wrap my hive where the wrapping goes almost all the way to the bottom. Here's the ground level. So I may go an inch and just wrap the hive and cover that bottom entrance entirely, forcing my bees to go in and out of the opening here at that winter be kind as the cluster moves up. They're eating the candy there anyway. They can catch a glimpse of that little slot and then they can take their cleansing flights and come back in. And I wanted to explain that. That's my reasoning. And again, I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it or should do it. It's the way I do it and it works pretty well for me. Now, if you have a better method and you like to use the solid bottom board and you just like to let your bees go in and out of there as they do, I think bees can handle that. They've done it for years. I've just noticed that I can get uh, bees coming out of here at around 34 degrees or higher, but down here, I'm gonna have to get a pretty darn warm day, sometimes into the 50s before they'll break cluster and travel that distance. I used to always run solid bottom boards. And when I came out of winter, my solid bottom board was just piled full of dead bees through those that naturally died in the wintertime. And I even made things out of rebarb that I could actually slide in there like a hook and I could just drag out hundreds, if not thousands of dead bees that died of you know, natural causes during the wintertime. And then I went to screen bottom board long after everybody else did. And I started overwintering colonies in a screen bottom board. And you might think that, oh, I'm getting too much wind in there. It's, it's too cold for the bees. I need something solid. I need to wrap them. I need to put shrink wrap around them, whatever. And what happened was I tried it one year on a few hives to go back to solid bottom boards and just see if I had any better success rate. Yes, they made it through winter, but oh my gosh, the bottom board astounded me. It was just full of all the garbage, from the colony that they had dropped over the course of that winter. And guess, get this, it was full of small hive beetle, small hive beetle larvae. They were all just in there. And that's when I learned that small hive beetle actually can pupate in that debris on a solid bottom board when the debris gets thick enough to kind of mimic soil. And so I just had a really bad beetle problem coming out of winter because that bottom board was just full of all the stuff that had fallen down from the colony of dead bees and wax and other stuff during the course of that winter. So that's when I just went back. I thought I, I come out of winter with a lot cleaner bottom boards, less stuff to clean up. And it didn't really make any difference to me on the overall health of the bees uh, as far as being too hot, too cold. Again, I really don't think we should wrap up our hives so tight that there's a moisture problem in that colony. Uh, whether you keep your bottom board uh, solid or you keep your bottom board a screen bottom board, that's really entirely up to you and your perspective and your philosophy. I really have weighed this out a lot through trial and error. And I'll tell you what really works best for me, and I've said it before, and that is if I can take uh, something like a plastic piece of cardboard, like uh, politician signs, that material that's uh, a corrugated plastic, I guess, and if I can cut it about an inch smaller than that bottom board and slide it on top of the screen, and I have about an inch or two of air uh, through the screen all the way around that screen bottom board, yes, I still get a bunch of stuff from the colony that falls to the center. But what you can do, you can tie a string on it and make a little hole in the front Halfway through winter, you can actually pull that out and dump all that dirt and stuff away from the colony and then slide it back in. That's kind of a cool thing to practice. I love that. And so it really works well if you have, you know, a few hives that you want to do that with. You're kind of combining a, a solid bottom board by sliding that in there, 
but by not making it the whole size of the screen bottom board, you're leaving an opening all the way around that screen bottom board to assist the bees in getting rid a lot of that winter stale air. Now, Reverend Langstroth, back in his writings in the late, mid to late 1800s, he wrote a lot about ventilation, and he was a brilliant person about beekeeping. That's whose hives we use, our Langstroth hives. And one of the things that he really focused on was ventilation in the wintertime. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I know a lot of you are new subscribers. Thanks for joining me. But he actually overlaid, or kind of gapped open his boxes, like the first deep, the second deep would be staggered back about three quarters of an inch or half inch, and the next one, and that way they had air. Well, wouldn't it rain in there? Of course it would. So they tilted the hive so the rainwater would flow out. And he wrote a whole chapter on the uh, essential part of ventilation by overwintering colonies way back in the 1800s. So we do need ventilation. Bees do need fresh air, not stale air, going all through that winter. And so that's one of the ways that I do it. I, I just either leave my screen bottom boards entirely open or slide something in there to cut down a little bit. And then I'll put my winter bee kind on there that has a slot that I showed in my last video and putting that together, wrapping your hive. If you didn't get a chance to see my last video about wrapping your hive and using a winter bee kind to feed the bees during the winter, I'll leave a link right up here in the corner and you can click on that after this video and watch my latest video before this one. But I just wanted to kind of give a quick update and say, this is my reasoning behind the screen bottom board. Well, I've been thinking a bit more about live streaming here and I'm kind of excited about it. It's gonna be really new to me. I've been talking to a few people about it and I'm telling, I'm giving them all these excuses why I don't want to live stream and I don't know what I'm doing. I might make some mistakes. I need a moderator. I don't have a moderator, all this stuff. And somebody gave me some good advice. They said, look, everybody knows it'd be your first time. Go on there, make a mess if you, if you do. Who cares? You learn, your next one will be better. I kind of like that. A lot of things I've done in life, I've done that. I didn't, you can't wait in, until you be, get, become perfect at something and then do it. I mean, if we did that, nobody would be a beekeeper. There's nobody that starts beekeeping as a perfect beekeeper. <laughs> so I'm thinking about getting into some live streaming and that way you guys can give some input, ask questions, you know, and it help you out a little bit more. And so uh, that may be coming down the road. So keep your eyes open for that. Hey, I wanna thank you for joining. Please subscribe. I'm still trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And for a while there, I thought it wasn't possible, but we've had a really strong growth the last few weeks here on my channel. So that's really pumping me up to kind of like, maybe we could make it, especially if I start doing some live streaming and so on. So I'm gonna kind of freshen things up a little bit more on my YouTube channel. Got a pretty heavy, heavy schedule this week, but after I get past this week, I'll be able to really focus on some new and improved things here on my channel. So be watching for that. But always, you guys make this worthwhile for me. You're my friends, you're my fellow beekeepers, and uh, it, it really means a lot to me that you're watching and I really do appreciate it. So do give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.